consciousness, so to say, the free will. Same way, whatever we study with Newtonian laws, uh, the laws of gravity, you know, you, you throw a, a stone, it falls. It cannot go up because it does not have its own free will. Mm -hmm. But that's not true about the mind. The neurons that are firing in, in our minds, there is some something inside us which is guiding them how to fire. When we get angry, they fire in a different way. Mm -hmm. When we are uh, meditating, they fire in a different way. So there is a free will or conscious phenomena which is as true a reality as the materialistic and inanimate phenomena in the universe which science studies versus the consciousness which is also we can see people are walking people are doing things on their own behalf they are thinking they are taking actions you know uh, the animals are doing that the plants are doing that you know the sun turns toward I mean the flower turns towards the sun when it sees the sun so it, there is something it's doing on its own behalf without any external force mm -hmm. so those things are like spontaneous we, we call it science does agree there is spontaneity in nature but in its laws, it completely ignores its mathematical formulation or inclusion. So it, like we study medical science, for example, it's all about the body which is conscious, how the diseases, you know, how the bacteria grow and how they turn into diseases, how we use antibiotics to cure them, to change their chemical How the immune system works. Uh, yeah, right. how that changes the body temperature, how it changes the blood pressure. These are all conscious phenomena which we can uh, manipulate by different means like drugs or, or external force or intervention. But the fact remains why, what causes these spontaneous uh, phenomena to occur? Now, that aspect of that spontan the built in spontaneity in nature, inherent in spontaneity in nature, which makes things move or change at their own accord. Mm -hmm. That aspect science has completely ignored and because of that since it's missing that the built-in motivation how can it have a purpose? All the purpose is killed from the study of that phenomena which is completely inanimate. So by law of what we focus on how we do science it automatically negates any uh, uh, free will phenomena which automatically kills purpose. Mm -hmm. So when we apply all the science to study the universe or study life and then we come out with the conclusion, hey, there is no purpose in life or universe, no surprise. <laughs> there is no surprise because that's the way we built in our method of science. And what if you're like a shark, your purpose is to eat. <laughs> exactly. There is a what causes a purpose uh, for uh, in shark so that it grows up and it acts in the way it acts. Like salmon, we know that salmon, uh, it lives all its life and then at the end of its life goes upstream mm -hmm. and goes dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's a spontaneous event or spontaneous phenomena which exists at its own without any external force. Mm -hmm. Now. It's programmed in there somewhere. Exactly. Now, science has a valid point. They say that, you know, if it's uh, if they allow for these kind of arbitrary spontaneity, then there is no science. Then it becomes very uh, subjective. Mm -hmm. So they actually try to argue that if you allow subjectivity, means free will, means uh, uh, random things that happen at their own accord, then how do you account for that? How do you, they can go either either way. They could go mm -hmm. this way, that way. So they are right in that sense that they do not allow that in conventional science. But that does not mean that the nature works that way. So with that limitation, we know that when we try to predict the behavior of the universe with the best known theories we have, which have been able to predict thousands experiments mm -hmm. which are materialistic experiments measurements and they were tested and tested but when we try to predict the overall behavior of the universe we end up with four percent prediction of what we see
rest 96 percent we cannot predict. And that also when they try to extrapolate to uh, the, the moment of why the universe came out to be being, when it came out to be being at time zero and to predict what will happen to it in future mm -hmm. because things are changing, it's changing with time. Uh, the universe is expanding. It's expanding and it's expanding acceleratingly. Or is it expanding? How does vacuum expand? Mm. Uh, exactly. That's, that's it's it. expanding into what? You think uh, the image you have is the universe is expanding, like you have a balloon, and that the balloon is expanding, but it's ex expanding into empty space. Exactly. Now, but what does the universe expand into? Exactly. Is there something out there in which it expands? Or even while it's expand within its own, how does that happen? What is causing it? These are all questions remain unanswered because of the fact that these phenomena are spontaneous phenomena. Mm -hmm. And spontaneous phenomena are consciously and by way of method of science are to be ruled out mm -hmm. and not to be considered in theories of science. Now that particular restriction or this method works very well. I mean, we have sent man to moon. Uh, we have built, look at how much progress science has made based on yeah. on these laws, uh, which work for inanimate matter. We have the Hubble telescope. Yeah, Hubble telescope. But we we're only looking at 4% of the universe. Exactly. 4%s matter. If you try to extrapolate these predictions to beyond matter, uh, it fails 96 percent and that points to the fact not that that's what nature is. The uncertainty and the, the, and the mystery is not in the nature, it's in the way we look at it mm -hmm. because we have limited our way of looking at it. It's the way we interpret it. Exactly. So we have to design a, an experiment in the physical world in order to I'll say, compensate for the equipment that we have. Exactly. We have to study the phenomena which have are spontaneous and try to predict them correctly first, like a, like a photon of light. It can become a particle or a wave. Mm -hmm. We must be able to predict that. We must allow that spontaneity to happen in the real science. Once we have that kind of uh, prediction, predictive capability or at least to be able to simulate that mm -hmm. mathematically, that freedom of degree of freedom that it can become particle or wave and we have governing equations, how that happens. Then we can talk about predicting or finding a purpose. In Why can't way. it be a particle that moves in a sine wave? <laughs> exactly. All those degrees of freedom mm -hmm. we are to allow in our method of science. Now that's what is in my book, uh, in the, the hidden factor, is that's what the hidden factor is. Mm -hmm. To allow for that spontaneity uh, in nature is, is the very mm -hmm. fundamental phenomena uh, 